Oh, it says it's been recorded. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Liam. How are you? Hello. Yeah, you well, Sean. Um, where where are you? You sound like you're a Lancashire lad. Or I'm somewhere from Lancashire. North. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Uh, do you know Chorley? Have you heard of Chorley? Um, I've heard of it. I'm, I don't know where it is on the map. Um, around there anywhere. So near Manchester. That's where everyone from around here. So you know when you, <laughs> you go <laughs> where you from? Oh, near Manchester. It's like yeah. Is it? Is it that far south? Um. I always think um, people in your part of the world are just the friendliest. See if you ever get a train from like London to Scotland, personalities change round about Lancashire. Yeah. <laughs> round well, about Yorkshire. I, I've, I always said people get nicer the north and the more north they go. So yeah. it's funny because you said about, what, about Manchester. Is, is it that far south? And it's, it's it's funny talking to someone from from Scotland because you'd consider me from to be from down south, whereas I would always just naturally think that I consider myself like northern. You know, so you're quite north, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I go to like Yorkshire and a little bit further up, like Northumberland, and they're like, "Oh, where are you from?" I'm like, "Oh, up north," and they're like, "No, you're from down south." <laughs> um, so it's funny. It depends where you are, I suppose, doesn't it? But yeah, it's funny. I, to... I love, I love like just just being up north, like from a work perspective as well. Like I always just love the chance to to. I, I was up in Scotland recently, um, in Airdrie, I think. Um, all right yeah uh-huh and yeah I, I don't know there's just something just just people just in my mind seem just so just much more just nicer and more just just more chilled out yeah more chilled out that's the that's definitely how i describe it yeah. i think it's because they're populated like the west coast of scotland and maybe where you're from is populated by irish people traditionally like in the past <laughs> yes um, so i had no idea where you're from because um, I, I know nothing about you. Why don't you tell us about, about um, yeah. your your life as an artist? Yeah, I need to put that about page on my website back now, actually. But um, I kept having to edit it because, well, one, I kept getting older and I kept having to change my age. I, I think eventually I just took it off because I just I wanted to kind of rejig what I was, um, you know, what I was kind of about as an artist, I suppose, because that's something that's always changing. So. Yeah, I need to get around to fixing that. But um, yeah, so about me, I mean, I, I, about me as an artist, I suppose. I've I've, um, I've been doing this full time now for about seven years. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, since since pretty much I, I was on that portrait artist show on Sky, and then that portrait artist show is that, that is portrait that like artist portrait show. artist of the year, um, <laughs> and that was pretty much the kind of you know that that stepping stone from going from a part-time artist to, to full-time mm. so um that was a springboard and everything kind of changed like almost overnight after that so um okay. and i've just kind of ran with it ever since but um it, uh, it's something that i've always done i mean I, I've, I've i've done it so, like I've, I've drawn for as long as i could hold a pencil really like it's just you know it's when it's that thing that is it, it, is the thing i do best it's just the thing i'm I'm known for, you know, if I go out and meet like friends of friends, they go, Oh, are you the artist? Like, yeah, you know, like I'm known as the artist, I guess. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's um, your, your... it just becomes part of your identity, I think, in a way. It's like, it's one of those weird professions where you, you, you're known as that thing rather than, mm -hmm. you know, yourself as a person. So it's your I, gift. They say your gift is the thing that you do with least amount of effort. And that's like you, it just kind of, your your gift, your just uh, I don't like that it. term, you know. Like, I, 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 obviously, when people say it, it's, they mean it in the, the nicest way, and I understand like the kind of sentiment behind it. But I think um, sounds like you've done no work. <laughs> kind of, yeah. You know, I think it just kind of just diminishes the 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 work that goes into it because I think like um, yeah, I, I've always said like you know, people ask me if if you can teach this kind of stuff, and I, I really do think that you it, it's something that you can be it can be taught and it can be learnt. Um, but it's just a case of putting the hours in, like anything. I think they say about what is it, ten thousand hours to become a master, a master at something. Um, and you know, I think if you do anything for long enough, you just become proficient at it. It doesn't. It's not something that just kind of happens overnight, and you're just born with it. Um, but I, I, I would say that maybe if we're going to talk about the, you know the, the gift, then maybe just the it's more of a kind of personality trait. I think just like um, the, you know, the perseverance just to kind of just want to just hold a pencil and just just 
draw and do your own thing. Like that's probably something that is probably quite innate in me. You know, like what, even just as a small kid, I would just, I would just be happy with it a pencil in my hand and just, you know, on my own in a room. We used, I used to go to this little nursery and they had like um like four rooms and one would be like a playground room, another would be something, something else. And then there was like an art room. And I even remember now to this day, I was like, I was always the one of the only ones in there just all day. <laughs> um so I think I think maybe that that is, you know, and you know, I have a lot of patience, I think, just to just to sit and just and just do it for hours and end. So I think maybe if, if, if that might be, you know, something that's just like inherent and maybe like a, a gift, um, so to speak. But you know, there's no real substitute for just the amount of hours that that goes into it. It's just a, it's something that that you there's, there's no shortcuts to it really. Um, I think you you can be taught to, you can be taught it to a certain extent. You know, people can give you pointers, but um really that there's so many i think there's so many very you you'll know this yourself like with painting that a lot of it is um it's all based on like on on touch and and just um something that you can't really like quantify like um when whenever people ask i always kind of compare it to something like baking you know like so if you make like bread for for example like everybody knows you, you can look up a recipe to make bread and someone can show you how to make bread but until you until you really know how it's meant to feel in your hands, and yeah. and and that that kind of touch aspect, then you're not really going to know whether it's right or wrong. And you need to make like what like a hundred loaves of bread before you kind of start to figure out actually right. If I do X and Y, then Z. Um, yeah. And painting is a very similar thing. I think it, it, it's a lot of it's down to just texture and touch and and you know it's impossible to say how much how much pressure to apply on this particular brush stroke you know you, you can't you can't put that into into a, a kind of number or you know um, so it's just something that you have to just dive in and learn learn for yourself and learn by doing and learn just re- repetition um, and and I'm, I'm kind of lucky enough that I've always I've been in, in a position where I've been able to just put time into it you know I, I'm, I suppose I'm relatively young as an artist and I've been doing it since a relatively young age where I didn't have a million other responsibilities where like I think a lot of um you know say when people are in their 30s for example well I'm in my 30s now but like people like me if they wanted to take up art now they're mm-hmm. going to find it a lot more difficult than than um you know myself who started it when I was in my teens because I had a lot more spare time then so yeah uh, yeah, life always gets in the way, and I've I've been probably fortunate enough to just be able to just I've I've always been on that sort of path of um, you know just being having having the time to, to having the time to do it, and the, and the more time that you put in, like I said, the more it pays off. So yeah, that's one thing that people always say is, oh, I wish I had the time to paint, but I don't. <laughs> well, everyone has time mm-hmm. to do what you feel is your thing to do. Um, well, so- did you go to art school? Was that was that your path when you left school to be an artist? I did. I went to. I did it. I studied fine art at uni, and I. <laughs> I really try my best not to give them like too much credit for, for yeah. everything because so, like, well, nowadays not- like, I don't know if you know much about like fine art degrees, but like they, obviously they give you the means, they give you the studio, they kind of just and then they they chuck you in a room and just say, nah, figure it out. You know, do what you want. Like. There's no, there's, there's really no guidance like but, uh, with regard to like technical skills. You know, there's no, there's no emphasis on teaching people how to draw and paint and and do any of the the technical things anymore. Unless you were going to go to something like um like the Florence Academy, for example, and and learn the really traditional old school methods, uh, which is going to cost you you know an arm and a leg. And yeah, I wasn't in a position to do that really. So I did, I did a fine art degree. Um, thinking, thinking actually, because I, I think um, I, I was, it was naive really in the first place. I should never have done it, but I think the the term fine art, you always imagine it to be, you know, oh, it's fine art. I'm going to learn how to do all the old master techniques, and <laughs> and in actual fact, it's like they put a like a dustbin in the middle of a room, and 
throw a lot of stuff in it. It's all it's modern art, basically. It's like it, it's mm-hmm. what that it's it's leaning towards now, and all, it's conceptual and it's um all the stuff that has merit. But I I, I always. Me personally, I just always wanted to just draw and paint, and and that's all I wanted to do. Um, so I never quite got on with the whole kind of university system. Like, uh, the, you know, that they they wanted me to do something different. I didn't want to do that. Um, I'm not. Uh, they were probably right. You know, I was on the I'm I, I, I probably on the wrong course to be fair. Um, so I just kind of just ambled my way through my degree. And got out the hell out of there as quickly as good, and then, um, and then I would I would say from there, like that's when I learned to to paint properly, just just literally by just doing it myself. Um, so yeah, I try not to give them to you. Uh, people ask me if I'm if I'm if I'm trained or I'm taught, and I probably would I would consider myself to be self taught. To be fair, um, there's quite there can be quite a bit of shall I say snobbery in the art world about where you were trained but I I didn't I I got into art school but I chose to go and be a nurse instead and I'm told by people who have gone to art school that they kind of beat the creativity out of them and to the ground like and built them from the ground up into what they thought art an artist should be how artistic what artistic techniques should be how to do academic painting and drawing basically um, and at the end of it, they felt like all the creativity was gone and they, they didn't identify themselves as the artist that they were yeah. to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, you no, know, it definitely does. And I, I can understand it to an extent because I think they want to encourage people to think for themselves and be, you know, um, and perhaps not follow like a generic kind of path of this is how you paint and uh, like a rigid um, uh, mindset. But so... You know that 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 method of just throwing you in there and saying just come up with some you know think for yourself come up with an idea we're not going to teach you how to draw and paint but uh, we want you to just express yourself and I can I can understand that to an extent and I think there, there's real merit in that but for for someone like myself I've, I think I've always just I'm not I probably wouldn't consider myself to be like a, a an artist as such you know I'm not an, um, as a how do I how do I explain this? But um, probably what I do is more of a kind of craft or a, like mm-hmm. a draftsman than than a, perhaps like a kind of um, it doesn't. It's, I'm 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 no good with my imagination to be fair. Like, <laughs> uh, but if you put something in front of me, I know how to paint it. So I think I, I I'm a different kind of artist than someone who just like you know if, if you gave me a blank canvas and said do mm-hmm. something, I, I I'd probably just stare at it and wouldn't really know what to. And right. then just painting like something in the room. Um, so I'm not that kind of arty farty, like. Uh, yeah, just... I, I totally get that. I understand because um, some artists are very good at just, oh, just do some free flowing art. But other artists, I find, find it very hard to know what to paint. And so if you're a draftsman or craftsman, portraiture is a great niche for you because essentially it's just there, you've got to create what's in front of you it's all there for you definitely um yeah i think i think probably like the term artist but it's almost like a almost like a personality type i think you know some people are just are just artists they just want to you know nothing else matters to them they just want to just create things um at at any cost and and, you know that, that i think that you know you get the term like starving artists because they're just it, they're perhaps no- not like financially like focused. They, they're not. They're not business minded. They're just. They're just pure like artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't consider myself to be one of them. I kind of wish I was in a way, like because I think there's something really like freeing and 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 cool about that. But um, no, I'm a bit more mm-hmm. just methodical and just um, probably a bit too sensible to be a true artist. I think. But um, well, that, that's but, a good thing to be. Because I, I don't think people realise that being an artist is a real job as well. Mm. Yeah, I know. I get asked that all the time when it, whenever like at weddings or something, and people ask me like, "Oh, so did you do this for a job?" I say, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." And they go, "Oh, all right." And and, and they, they kind of, um, I, I and people will bluntly come out with it because I, I mean, you go to weddings, people have had a few drinks, and they they're pretty much like you know they're just they'll ask you anything so they go oh well 
you know, do you make enough money doing this? And it's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, um, th- there's this weird kind of just idea that, uh, uh, you know, it's like this, it's the starving artist, isn't it? It's the it's huh. this stereotype. Um, or do you think that you've got all the days in the week free just to, you're just sitting around all day doing absolutely yeah. nothing? <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure, do you know what? There, I'm, I'm certain because really all, anyone could technically be an artist. You know, you have these people who just will just, I don't know, just do like a little painting on a Sunday afternoon. And then in technically speaking, they're, they're an artist, but mm-hmm. they're probably not, you know, and, and not that they want to, but want to be, but they're, they're not making a living off that or, you know, yeah. like, um, and, because you know now, now yeah, like I said, like anybody now can be an artist. So, um, based on that, there's probably only going to be a small percentage of that massive group that are doing it as a job, and that's you know that's just how it is. Yeah. Um, so you're a man with a business plan. That's good. Um, are you, is portrait your main thing that you do then throughout the week? Like, do you do portraits or do you just yeah, do things? I think yeah. I suppose that's my kind of like my thing. If you will, um, and it's it's what I've always kind of enjoyed doing. I don't know if it's what I do best. I'm not really sure, but it's the what I like about portraits is just the the, the challenge of it. You know, the, the, they're unforgiving. You know, you get, you you got to get them right, otherwise, it, it can be know, in terms of the kind of likenesses and things like that. That's something that's quite important to me, especially like when I'm. When I'm painting portraits, it's like the first and foremost, I feel like it, you know, it's a given that it just has to look like them. And if it, it it's so easy to to mess that up because like if you if you if you think about it, like what I said this to people, like every everybody has like two eyes and nose and mouth and generally a kind of egg-shaped head and ears, and you know, we're we're, we're all pretty similar, and yet no, no one looks the same. And and they're, they're the kind of like they're the fine margins that we're working with in portraiture, whereby like even even when you've got the same kind of features distributed across the face in pretty much the exact same way for everybody, and yet to have a completely different look, it, there's there's got to be something more than just getting eyes, nose, mouth right. So. Um, yeah, the, I, just, I love how unforgiving they are. I love the the challenge of doing it. Um, I think from a from a viewer's perspective, like you know, people just gravitate to it, it, the faces. You know, people identify with faces is what we all know. Uh, so if you can put a face down on a piece of paper and say, "There it is," mm-hmm. it, you you just get this reaction straight away. Everybody can just relate to it. Um, so I've I've always got the most, I think, probably gratification as 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 an artist from from doing portraits, and that's probably why I've just carried it through. But 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 also really, I, I just I like to, I don't know, I like to just try and do difficult things and just kind of push the limits of what's you know what I can do. And I'm just looking at your website. Look, these are absolutely beautiful. Oh, thanks. Oil yeah. portraits. They're like it's almost. I don't know if these were all done in the same kind of time like era, because some of them are more roughly. Similar. Yeah, the, the most of those are probably from the time. Uh, so in the last seven years, really, it's so sort of like in, um. Yeah. Some, some some of them are um, more painterly and some are like super hyper realistic there but they're all beautiful um how long are they do they take you to do each portrait um, Day, typically, yeah um nowadays about two days um yes. or two or three days depends really but um my my, my, my approach just changes all the time actually but like i think like you said about some of those being a bit more painterly, they were probably done in a single session. Your animal ones, love, love, love. Oh, I love doing those. They're gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, really. That they, they were like my bread and butter before um before I went full time. I was just doing like a lot of pet portraiture, um, and yeah, I, I, I love animals. Like um, mm-hmm. so it's something that I've always just enjoyed painting. And um, I you know when I, when I started painting, I was just doing um. You, you know, I don't know, you paint your neighbor's dog or something, and then their friend sees it and then they want. So 
I managed to kind of build up this little local network of people just wanting oh. their portraits and portraits of their kids and um, just small commissions, really. But, like, I suppose financially speaking you, you when you're just working for like friends and family and then friends of friends you, you you never like even to this day like i don't you know i don't charge my, my friends like very much at all if anything because i just like it's I, I don't feel comfortable doing it so and i was never really able to make like a proper living doing just yeah. doing these like little pet portraits for like local well but at the same time like it it, it just doing it gave me like the you know the know-how to be able to build it up so um even though it might not have paid off at first i think like over time you know as long as you're doing you creating it's probably just not worth even thinking about like how much it's worth it's just um it's, yeah you know. um <laughs> like you've got look at that see the way you paint light it's just um, amazing <laughs> uh, yeah it's all about light really i think like um I th there's, a, there's a quote and i can't remember who said it but like um they said don't paint people don't paint things paint light is that right yeah well that's that's one of them and the other one is um it's it's talking about the kind of um the importance of tonal value versus color and and and, it, and in fact like tonal value is that the most important thing or you you know your tonal values and then color seems to take all the credit for it because mm -hmm. the first thing people oh i love the color of that but Without without that kind of, um, you know, the contrast of light and dark, it doesn't make any sense at all. You know, so um, I've probably butchered that quote, but it's something to that effect anyway. So. Yeah. Did you see in your first year of art school, did they make you paint in black and white for a whole year for that purpose? Oh, I don't know. Did they? No. Um, <laughs> I've heard um, some people who've gone to art school say that in the first year they weren't allowed to use colour, they had to use just black and white just so they learned tonal value. Well, I would probably agree with that. I think that's probably a good practice, actually. Like, um, I, I do I do the occasional bit of one-to-one -one just teaching and, and I find that to be good practice because I think um, if you can understand tonal values, then it really does help going forward with colour. And, and I think if, you, if, you, if you're um, just starting out, I think if you dive in with colour, it just... It, it it just becomes too overwhelming. I, th I think there's there's too many uh, variables because it, there's there's something weird about like the you know like just um, I probably need like an entire like PowerPoint presentation to demonstrate <laughs> this, but like um, certain colors, even though they look like the perhaps the same kind of tone of value, let's say like mm -hmm. a, a bright red and a bright yellow, they might on the face of it look the same, but if you were then to like convert them to black and white the yellow is actually a lot brighter and, and mm. a lot lighter um it's things like that that just that it's based on the kind of illusions and, and and i think painting in black and white is a good way to just kind of mm -hmm. understand i'm thinking just as you were saying that see if you were doing a wedding you took a picture of the scene on your phone and then converted it to black and white you would then would you then pick up what the tonal values are and where the light is? Uh, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that's a definitely a good way of doing it. For, so working from a, a, a colour image and black and white image. What I sometimes like to do, actually, is um, let's say if I've painted something, um, I'll, I would I would take a picture of it, uh, of the painting, and then convert that to black and white, and it just helps you kind of see those like tonal relationships um, a little bit more clearly, and then, and then you can obviously kind of adjust accordingly in, in the colour work. So um, I think that's the same with any, painting anything. You, you've got to give yourself a fresh look at it every time. You, you know yourself, like, you, you when you are painting something, um, your eyes become, I think, they seem to just become a bit too kind of adjusted to it. And then, and then you step away from it, from maybe from a distance, it looks different, or you can, well, you know, come back to it in a couple of days as a different look. Um, so I would say a good practice for any, um, you know, any artist in training is just to constantly give yourself a fresh look at it. I I always like to just look at it, look at my paintings through like a just through my camera phone. Um, 
and what that does it immediately just knocks your your uh, the, knocks back the distance from from your eye to the painting and yeah. just helps you just kind of see a few oh. things differently or you some artists like uh, classically they would like look at it in a mirror uh, yeah. or you can turn it upside down just to yeah. just to re refocus your eyes but there's there's all sorts of things it seems if I paint portraits, um, mm. which I'm not very good at right now, but um, sometimes you go blind when you're looking at the painting. Um, <laughs> so I take a picture of it on my phone and then can, um, invert the image. So it's almost just like doing a mirror thing. And then you see all the errors. Like, oh, that nose is a bit squint I or that, that, that eye's wonky. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst, that. Especially when you, when you spend a day on something and you, you look at it and you go, oh, I'm really pleased with that. And then you turn it around in the mirror and you're just like... And on one eye is like up, up here and monster. <laughs> like, why is oh, that? It's so it's weird, isn't so it? It's <laughs> so But um, yeah, it has to be done, I suppose. It's just, um, it's good. It's, it's good to be like, so, you know, to critique yourself. I think that's like, um, first and foremost, like that is a, um, this is the best way to learn. You know, you, you, <laughs> You're not going to learn if you're not like hard on yourself, and you not go right. No, I need to fix this. I mean, it's, it's it won't it won't do. Um, that's something I've always been pretty okay at, really. Because um, you know uh, everybody else will just tell you it's great. So <laughs> for the most part, anyway, you know, you, unless you've got someone just like honest and I know actually on, on that topic, I was thinking about that recently in wedding in the wedding painting world nobody ever tells you that the work is rubbish <laughs> well mm -hmm. and it's, it, i don't think it's a good thing i'm not sure if that's a good thing or not because you don't everyone's too scared i was like oh that's a lovely painting everyone's so happy at weddings oh you're so talented oh that's so good nobody would say that's crap <laughs> no it's great in it uh, yeah that's why <laughs> that's what i love about weddings i just I just go and get my ego strokes all weekend and then come back to the studio and i'm all fresh and happy and <laughs> But, um, I, I, do, I do some self-adulation a lot I'm like oh my goodness that was so crap why did nobody tell me that like but no, who tells you as an art as a wedding artist or as a like an independent artist that your work's no good if you've not got just what do you no, do it's, it's really do you hard learn? To get perspective do you learn? like um and nowadays nobody likes to be told that you know no one likes to be criticized early and it's just like um yeah I don't know. I, I think just self critique is the only is the only way forward. But that that comes at um, that can be risky as well because I think you can. There's definitely such a thing as you know being too hard on yourself. Um, and when you look at so you go on social media these days and you just like like saturated with like amazing artists and mm -hmm. successful artists and you, it's only natural to to just compare yourself to those and, and compare their level to yours and, and then you become all sorts. You know, it, it's, yeah. a, it's a dangerous um, route to go down. But I think, um, yeah, it, it, to an extent, self-critique is, is important. But, I mean, it's you have to, you have to be. I think you have to be at peace at where you are in your art journey because sometimes you could be like, oh, I can't get my brain to get my hand to the level of, what they're painting at or what I want what I think I should be painting at just can't make it happen yeah. but yeah. just be at peace with yeah where you're at I think so. um I mean it's I think it's always something that the more you do it that you, you start to see the improvement yourself don't you it's just um, mm -hmm. and and that just it just simply comes with time and repetition practice so um I think you've got to compare yourself not to someone who's been doing it maybe either much longer or is more successful or has more means to do it but just compare yourself to i don't know last week or last year or just and, and yeah. just just keep chugging along cool so yeah. what happened with um that art programming thing oh yeah art programming <laughs> thing yeah <laughs> well um i mean it sounds dramatic to say like that you know when somebody you say something's life changing, because mm -hmm. uh, it, it just sounds a bit airy fairy that, but it 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 was really because I mean everything like I, I, after going on that and then it it, it broadcasting like things literally did change overnight. Like um, oh, so what um, happened before you were before you went on that? You were were you work were you working another so, job? 
I was I was working at Tesco. Oh, yeah. Um, so I I was doing like the early shift there. So I did I I, I used to start at like four in the morning, oh, and then nice. about lunchtime, and then I would have the afternoon to paint, and that was really the only way that I could have the hours to to paint because I, I knew that if I did the nine to five gig, mm-hmm. I would just not do it. I would not uh-huh. like, paint or draw in the evening. So I'd, like working at Tesco as much as I kind of at the time begrudged it it was like an amazing just chance for me to just you gave me that flexibility to to be able to just train as an artist I suppose um so and then, and then especially doing those hours I mean it's brutal doing that like four or four in the morning and and that was that was my life really for a few how many days a week was that was that four or um, four days? Five, or five I think um how I was technically part time. I think I did about. I think I did just show off thirty hours a week. So, um, and then on the side, I was just like doing commissions, uh, like I said about the pet mm-hmm. portraits, people, portrait people, kids. And I think because because a I wasn't probably earning lords from those commissions because they were just for family and friends. Um, and two, I was already kind of working more or less full time. I didn't have like I didn't have the luxury of spending ages on one particular job. So. I, le- I kind of taught myself to to paint quite fast and, and efficiently and to get stuff done in one afternoon or or, um, or you know however long it took, um, and that that kind of way of working really lent itself to um, to the format of that of that show. Do you, have you seen any of it? Or... This artist of the year in Sky Arts. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's, it's I guess it's like a you know there's a pretty tight deadline of just you've got four hours to paint someone's portrait and that's <laughs> and as it happened that was pretty much what I was used to doing anyway yeah so, you know a lot of people are just terrified of that little time limit where I was like who were you painting um I was painting in Dave Myers the Harry Biker okay yeah Harry Biker. um Imelda Staunton and Tom Courtney so yeah, it was really good. So like, I was always pretty like co- like confident, you know, going into it because I knew that I could do it in that in that short space of time. It was just being able to just hold your nerve, I suppose, and just perform. <laughs> um, so yeah, loved it. I enjoyed it. It was it was fun. Um, really like unique experience. I think going on like mm-hmm. just being around all the production and cameras. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's a funny. So funny. I don't know if you've ever been around that kind of thing. It, it like kind of almost like ruins the magic of like TV because you you see you see all the the guts and and kind of scaffolding that goes into making a TV show just kind of seem all really seamless for an hour. Uh, mm-hmm. And when when you're like behind the scenes, you kind of see all the, the the production that goes on. It's it's like it's fascinating in its own way, but it kind of just ruins <laughs> <laughs> TV. So I mean. It it because I think the show looks like it's quite intense, especially that time limit and then the scrutiny by the judges. But um, I, I, it's actually dead laid back. It's it's really? yeah, it's really chill. So uh, you get a little bit more time than you you um you think. Um, and the judges. And we 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 sit and chatting to your the, like the Pete the hair biker people and yeah yeah. And chat. He's a really nice bloke, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was an artist too, actually. So he's he, he worked in like, kind of um, yeah. I'm sure I can't remember exactly, but I think he worked in like either prop design or like costume design for for um, like um theater and all, all that. So he he had a, like an artistic background. So he was really like interested in the um in the process and just just had a lot to a lot to say. Like I I, I love cooking too, so like it, it was really good to be able to just chat to him about that too so yeah I couldn't really ask for a better sitter that was like you know like I found, I remember I found out in the morning by accident because they don't they're not supposed to tell you until um mm-hmm. until they actually walk in and then I, I saw one of the one of the producers he had like a sheet of paper and he put it down by accident and I saw uh, I saw it so I had to pretend to be <laughs> to be surprised but when I found out I was like Yes, because <laughs> my, my, I was I was I was worried it'd be someone I'd never heard of. Because I mean, like <clears throat> they have some big names on there, and 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 then they have just some maybe like lesser known celebrities, more you know, and, and perhaps more obscure. So 
I was a bit like, oh, I hope it's someone that I actually know and I can kind of relate to. And yeah, it definitely was. So. Oh, and what became of your painting at the end? Did they get to keep uh, He's got it. Yeah, he took it. Um, so they, they picked one um, to keep of, of, the, of the three that they make. So I was, yeah, lucky enough to get that picked. Um, so And he sent me a picture of it too. So he's... It's, it's, um, Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's in his house. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's yeah, that it's a nice touch. Um, and then yeah, so um, and then I was in the the following rounds um, up to the up to the final, um, and that that was when it all started to get a bit mad because I I always thought like I would, I I imagine that I would just go on the first show of the first round give a reasonably good account of myself just paint something that looks like whoever it was and then maybe i get a little bit of work off the back of it when it finally airs and i could just kind of just have a few nice commissions and then go back to work afterwards um and then i got i was i got through to the semis and i was like okay so you know i'll get another week of tv maybe that's 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 cool um <laughs> And then got through to the final. And then at that point, I was like, oh, hang on, I could actually like maybe even go and win this. So um, uh, I didn't, but. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But it, no, it was, it was such a good experience. Like, and uh, it it probably came at exactly the right time, but I suppose in, you're always like in hindsight. Um, because I think in the end, what really cost me, like from just maybe winning it, was just, just a, a simply a lack of experience just with commissions and. Uh, up until that point, I'd always just been, it had been a case of, oh, you want a commission? Okay, send me a photo and I'll paint this photo and there you go. Like, I'd never had any experience of, of meeting a sitter um, and then kind of uh, composing, like, the shot myself mm -hmm. and and then painting it and to, you know, for, yeah. So... I was just I was just totally inexperienced. I was out of my depth in that sense. Whereas I did well in the live shows because, but by live shows I mean like the kind of you know where where they have the sit in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, I did I did well in that because I didn't have to compose any of that. They just put a sitter in front of you and go paint that. And I, I've always been comfortable doing that. But I, at the at the end in the final they give you like a your own little commission where you go and meet a sitter and you 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 kind of just do it from start to finish. So I met Catherine Jenkins, um, which was really cool. Uh, but I, I botched it. I, I I made a mess of the commission, like to be fair. So um, that's probably what what cost me in the end. And it was just a just inexperience. Just um, you know, in hindsight, if I could go back and do that again, I think I'd like I'd make a good job of it. But at the time, mm. I just didn't really know what I was doing. So, did, were you? Did you ha get to take your own stuff, or did they give you like paints and stuff? It was a bit like a David and Goliath. Yeah, the, a bit of both actually. So you 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 take what you take whatever gear that you want to take, and because I, I you know I suppose there's no um, set equipment for artists, so everyone mm. likes to use their own type of brushes, paints, canvases. Um, but they, they did give me a little set of paints and brushes, which is quite cool. So you used to get one of those, I think, just a, in case of emergencies, I suppose. Just, um, um, but no, they look after you. They, um, they give you all the kind of equipment that you need. I think they give you, a, um, I think we got a, like a little voucher just to, to buy some materials with. So it's, yeah. a, it's, um, it's a really nice, like, a really nice show to get involved. I'd, I'd encourage anyone, even if they're not quite confident of, of, you know, being able to do it, like I would say, just, just do it, just have a go. Like that's what, that's what I did. I never, ever imagined that I would like kind of, you know, be in like the final three of that. But um, because, like I said, I just didn't really. I was working at Tesco. I didn't really know what I was doing. Like um, I was just inexperienced. But sometimes you just, I don't know, you just, just take chance and just <laughs> go with it. Yeah. So, and so your your life changed overnight from it. You, in what way do you? Yeah, I guess so. Like it only. I don't mean like in you know, a kind of dramatic way, but in the sense that, um, like, I I got so so 
the it was filmed in like 2016 in like the summer so everything kind of just and then i think it only broadcasted in the the following year around the around the same time so there was almost like a year in between um and i and i imagine that i thought oh well, when it comes on hopefully i don't look like a complete idiot and <laughs> you know you start thinking back to things you've said in on the camera but um I thought I'll give a reasonably good account of myself and people will go, oh, I like his work and maybe they'll, they'll maybe I'll get a few commissions, maybe a few more no, no, Instagram followers, whatever. Um, mm. And I, I, and I took a few months off, I guess. I took like a three-month break from Tesco at the time, um, thinking, all right, well, that'll give me enough time to just work through whatever work I get off the back of that. Um, and we'll we'll just see what happens from there. So... The, the first show aired, and then like that night I just like <clears throat> just email after email after email just just oh we we you know commissions basically um and I thought I was like oh right this is this is good a little a little more than I thought it would be but we'll we'll see yeah. um and then you start kind of just testing the water with like pricing and um just seeing because that's something that I've always really struggled with um knowing how to value yourself but anyway um and then i went to work the next morning um and my phone's still just going off just email after email and then um my my mate my friend who i work with he he was like asking you know he was like oh so you're getting a bit of work off and 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 then my phone would go off again and again <laughs> just all all morning and he and, he, and i remember because he, he, he looked at me and he goes he was like he said oh you're you're done you're done here like he's like that's it like you you know um and I was like no no this will die off like you know in a couple of days and it just it just didn't it just didn't start and then and then it was on again the week after same thing happened again mm -hmm. and then so uh, yeah I just handed my notice in and that was that wow and uh, your commissions just, just keep that, they just keep coming then your commissions they just keep yeah. coming yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, like funnily enough, like which and it still baffles me, but like even to this day, like still um not obviously as 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 frequent, but um still to this day the work still comes in from that. Um because nowadays like it's great because everything's on demand, you know, people can just um people you know I could, I could stream it on the tv now if, if i want to um and especially like during lockdown everybody kind of discovered portrait artists of the year i think it was like um yeah. up until then it was maybe it was a bit of a niche thing it was only on sky art so only people who had sky could watch it and then they mm -hmm. moved it to like now tv and then i think it became so on part of, it became part of just like freeview i think mm -hmm. and then obviously during lockdown i've no one had anything to do so um and that that format of just that that show is like the most perfect like lockdown TV that you could ever ever think of. It's just like so therapeutic. It's so easy to watch. It's just like it's Sunday afternoon, just lying in front of the TV, just with a brew and just and just <laughs> watching people paint. Like that is what that show is like designed for. I think. Um, so everybody discovered it. I think again in in lockdown. Um, and just reached a much wider audience, and then people see the, the the new series, and then they go back to the old ones, and um, so so even like I said, even to this day, I still get like just people just discovering it, um, which is so it's like the gift that keeps on giving. Really, it's um, I'm I'm very very lucky to to have had that um experience, and yeah. Cool. Okay. How are you getting on the weddings then? Ah, <laughs> good. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit of a that's that's come out of nowhere. That like it's really weird. Like, did did you get married yourself this year? Mm -hmm. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, we got married in June, so we were actually due to get married in like, um, twenty twenty, and then we all know what happened then. So, like, um, oh. yeah, the world ended. So, um, yeah, we 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 had to like postpone it twice. Um, so. And then, and then you know, life just kind of takes over. We bought a house, um, um, it, it just kind of got put on the back burner. So, um, and then we we were going. We had a holiday booked in June um, this year. We were going to Greece, and I think a few months before, and we just kind of joked about it and said, "Oh, maybe we should just go and do it while we're there." So, you got married in Greece. 
So we did, yeah, just the two of us. It was like it was amazing, yeah. So <laughs> um, we'd we'd gone from like having this like big wedding plan um, to just literally the two of us, like no family, no friends, like barely anybody knew about it. Um, so yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Um, and is your wife is she an artist as well? No, no, she's not. Um, she's very like creative. Like she does all the kind of um, like interior deck you know she's like mm -hmm. like what i was saying before about not having like me not having much imagination like she's got more imagination than me so she, she like she can you should always like putting more bits of like furniture together in the house so she makes the house look nice and just like and, and she brings that kind of she has that artistic flair without being able to to perhaps like you know paint or draw so yeah um but so your weddings yeah your lovely weddings, weddings. <laughs> um so that that started like literally as a um all i all i ever intended it for, it for it to be was just like a little bit on the side um and it probably stemmed from that from from that portrait as to the issue because uh it was a, a my intention with it was to was to go and do a portrait of the couple on their wedding day and i knew that i knew that i could do it in the time on the day yeah. Uh, and I knew that I was, you know, I was, I was good at it. So I thought I'll go and do, I'll go and do portraits at weddings. No one else was doing it. Um, not, not in the sense of like having a kind of like head, shoulders, yeah. you know, close up portrait. Yeah. No, like, as far as I was aware, no one was doing it. No. Um, so I thought, well, that's, that's pretty cool. And yeah. people just, you know, people just love to watch mm -hmm. people paint. I think they, they, you know, they think it's magic. They just like, um, so it, it, for me, it kind of ticked a few boxes. It was like something for, I mean, from a from from the client's perspective, it's something for their guests to enjoy on the day, um, which they do. It's then something that they can just keep something really unique that that they can have just forever. Um, for me, it just gives me a nice change of scenery just from the studio and just, you know, it gives me an excuse to actually <laughs> get dressed really. Like, um, <laughs> stuff because I normally just roll out of bed and I'm in, I'm, I'm <laughs> um, so just give, gave me a bit of a change of the scenery and just, it, just a chance to go and just, um, it was just after all the COVID stuff because, so we we're all just cooped up and I think we all just wanted to just go and do things. Um, so, um yeah it, it just seems to kind of tick a few boxes and i thought well see how it goes I, even if i was you know i was pretty comfortable just doing my commissions during the week but i thought if i can go out on a weekend and make a few mm -hmm. more just doing a doing a few weddings then i was like well great um so that was that was how it always was intended just like a little bit just a, a little summer gig uh maybe the old, so like, five or six and now um having to just admit to myself that it's probably like <laughs> muffled time. More uh, your time <laughs> and no, I really didn't I almost didn't want it to be, but it I just I, it is really. It's just like I I do more of these now than probably than I do commissions. Um it's also a good place. Um weddings is full of people who are your commission clients as well, if you can Exactly, use yeah, yeah. That was that was part of the thinking as well. It's just like, you know, because um, you, you you're going you put yourself out there, you 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 know, you um you kind of bring in your shop window to the mm -hmm. to the world really and, and you know, people's weddings and they've all had a few drinks and they all just wanna, yeah. you know, oh we I, I've got a job for you, and then you know, um so, so yeah, it was an opportunity to just get more clients as well. You know, I like as much as I, I, I love, well, I don't love, but as much as I, I think social media is a great tool to to just put yourself out there in the world. Like, there's there's still no substitute for physically doing it and just physically being present somewhere and yeah. and getting, you know, like t t to me, like. I've just, I've just lost all interest in like social media in a way. It doesn't just doesn't do anything for me anymore. Like when I when I first what like a few years back, maybe like you know when your phone starts binging off and and you get oh you get a comment on your and it's like oh excited. I I I feel almost like nothing from that anymore. Just like 
I, I just lost, I've just lost all enthusiasm for like social media. And whereas, like now, you go, I go to weddings and people come over and they go like, oh, oh, and you're like, there's no like substitute for that, 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 that kind of like in person reaction. You just can't, you mm-hmm. can't, you can't beat it. Like it means more to me than like any kind of just comment online. It just, just you know, just being there and being present. So, um. But but yeah, like even like even with all that, like I said, I, I still just never really. <clears throat> I always had it in mind that it would just be my side gig, and for me, it it, it is just like a means to an end. Like as uh, I don't know how do I put this. Like I got sick of doing commissions um, no. because I'll, some of them are great and some of them um, are really just enjoyable, but. For the most part, I don't know. You might feel the same. They just become like vanity projects for people, and and they always want to just have their input. No one can just like nowadays. I do commissions and I paint something and I finish it and I'm happy with it. It's it's like I'm happy with it, and you submit it, and it just oh, will you just will you just do this? Will you just do that? Um, or like, will you just um, you know make my skin a bit smoother? Okay, I'll do that. All right, okay. So I'll go back to him with it again. Oh, okay, yeah, great. Will you just um, um, make my skin tone a bit uh, lighter or dark? You know, just change my skin tone. All right, okay, I've done it. Oh, it looks a bit um, it looks a bit patchy now. It's like yeah, because it's had about six coats <laughs> because you've just like thrown it back at me like a dozen times. Like, oh, so I, I, that's not that's not um you know like that's not everyone but it just feels like it's just um people just can't resist just having their own little um input on something so i feel like my kind of like the more commissions i do my my kind of artistic freedom has just been kind of slowly just so it's funny for wedding away. paintings i don't know about you i, f- I find that people don't want anything changed on the wedding painting I always say to them, yeah. right, you can have anything changed while I'm here. I've got the paint out. Uh, yeah. It won't offend me. Just tell me. I can change anything. I'm like, oh, maybe it's because they're drunk. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe yeah. maybe one one or two persons saying, okay, you just change this. But maybe they've said that the day after or yeah. when I've I mean, it. Yeah, I, I, you just feel like you have a little bit more <clears throat> control over it, in my opinion. Just um, something that they, they, they want. They want just what you... Don't I think the the best like clients are the ones where they respect the kind of process of of you're an artist and this is your work and that's what they're paying for. It's not not what they imagine in their head. Yeah. To translate. It's like they want an ideal client would respects like your work and they want your interpretation of it. Like however it is, and I and I and I, I totally get that. There's there's room for. You know, if there's if there's something that's blatantly kind of just wrong or just you know not quite, um, and, and usually I'll be the first to kind of pick up on that anyway because I just you know, um, but yeah, I think for for like for when I go to weddings, I just I, I do feel like a bit more uh, like I don't have some just freedom over what I'm painting, um, and I love that like um, because I just feel like I've just been trapped in this kind of circle of you know doing pleasing clients pleasing. <laughs> yeah and sometimes you just need to just kind of break loose and just be like be an artist and and for me i mean even like doing these weddings it is a chance for me to kind of break away from doing the commission work and in theory give me more flexibility in the studio just to be able to do the work that I want um <clears throat> that was that was what I've always had in mind so uh, when I'm when I'm doing this but <laughs> like with anything it's like now I find myself just doing weddings all the time and then not having any time to spend in the studio so it's like it's just like a vicious circle of like <laughs> um but I'm I'm pretty much like on top of everything now. So like I've I've got a couple more, I've, I've maybe like a handful more for the rest of the year, and then I'm I'm I'll have a few months then of just literally like play time in the studio. I've got no commissions, no like no weddings, no 
and, and and no kind of like bills to worry about because like doing the weddings has given me that kind of um you know that financial security which is a great thing to have as a, as an artist because mm -hmm. I think as a, as a creator you're always perhaps like waiting for your next job to come in and yeah. you, you don't quite know when it's gonna happen and as a result i think we're quite conservative or i am anyway i'm quite like conservative with with how much i spend and and like mm -hmm. um and because I always think in my back in my mind, like, well, I've got away now, but um, I might not have any tomorrow. What if, what if I don't get any next year? What if, you know, what if, what if, um, mm -hmm. whereas weddings now I can, can pre -plan. I can 18 months in advance. Yeah. And I know that I know now that I've got a salary for next year if I just turn up. And yeah. that's, that's a, that's a really like great thing to have as an artist. Cause it, it just takes all that pressure away of having to, to um take on crappy jobs for a few quid just to just to make sure that you you get by that month so um i can i can for the first time i think in in the seven years that i've worked as an artist i can now like just spend some time in the studio without any pressure of just um you know is this gonna sell is this and you know am i gonna am i gonna be okay if the, like i've I've got time now to be to be an artist. I think <laughs> I can't wait. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But um, and that's what that's what weddings have have given me. It's given me that that opportunity to just to just be a bit more expressive. I think in the studio. So, um, and then I guess I guess going forward, I think like I want to. You know, I probably do want to just be able to just do my own work and just sell it, and that'd be that. Um, um, but that's a risky business, you know. That, that you you're relying on, you know, you need your your customer base, you need your you need some galleries to exhibit in, you need you need a lot of things, I think, for that to for that to just go smoothly. So, um, yeah, the weddings are just a, a really nice little kind of. Um, cushion i suppose just to and not only that but it's like it's it's been like great practice for me like from a painting perspective it's like i've learned mm -hmm. so much just doing just doing these weddings like just learn I've, I've like you learn how to paint you know like i said you just learn by by doing it i think like doing that under pressure on the day in sometimes challenging conditions is like there's no better way to learn than that and and, mm -hmm. and also doing like portraiture and you're doing these like Heads that are literally like that big, I mean, you got yeah, to you got to try and achieve some sort of likeness through that, and that's like it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah, you'll know yourself, won't you? Like, um, how long have you been doing weddings for? Weddings I've been doing for three years. Yeah. Um, different. Yeah, I do. Like, I'm just looking at your portrait, your um, wedding oh. gallery. So I see that you do like scenes and also the portrait so yeah I think I've been asked to do mainly scenes so you're yeah. right small tiny faces get your small brush out yeah. I was working in acrylic mostly at the start and that's a nightmare because it dries too quickly and oh, like you're trying <laughs> get on with acrylics at all mate. yeah to do tiny facial details and it's already dry and you're trying to fix something and I don't know how I ever it did that in a different color to how mm. you apply it and that to me is just like I just find myself just overworking them because I'm just constantly just, and then you end up, they all kind of wrinkle up and I don't know. I just, I've never quite got on with that, with that medium. Um, there's some that do it really well, like, like, you know, Steph, Stephanie, and she, mm -hmm. she works in acrylics and she just makes it look so easy. And it's like, yeah, I don't get how she does that. But, but I speak to her and she says the same about like oils. She's like, I don't know how you do it. And so I think it's just each to their own in it. And, um, you know, if if you spend enough time doing your particular medium, you you're just gonna work out the intricacies of it and just figure it out. So, um, yeah. So, oh, I, you know, when you were saying about the portraits and the scenes, like, mm -hmm. so what I I got into it with the intention of doing portraits because that was like, you know, mm -hmm. natural, and then started getting asked to do the scenes and um. In some ways, I think that makes much more sense because it's like um, that than having a portrait because the people want like you know, yeah, painting of their wedding. It's not just you know a portrait of them from a from a photo. So, um, yeah, 
the scenes actually I do more of them now than anything else and I prefer to do that um um and also I think that the um the guests at the wedding kind of maybe appreciate that more it's like oh yes. can you paint me in the background <laughs> yeah exactly yeah well they can get a little bit involved can't they so uh -huh. um like I said it, it it ticks a few boxes doing like painting at weddings because it's just something fun for the guests but um where you know when all's said and done like and those paintings like this is when i when i started enjoying it for me because like up until up until there was a there was a point where um i was doing them and i thought i was thinking what am i doing like, am i just doing this just for like for, for a few quid and i am i really enjoying it i'm not I'm not sure <laughs> um i thought is the, the, I, th I actually thought to myself this is just gimmicky this like um that that was what i was thinking at the time um and then somebody uh, i presented one to somebody and she got all emotional and she said <clears throat> and she said and she goes um oh you know what um this is gonna be like in my like family for years and she's like i'll probably like end up passing this down to like my like kids or grand and i and i, I never considered it that way before but like you know they do last forever like they're well the royal paintings and you, you can kind of imagine them like going forward like in another whatever like yeah. 50 years and and having that kind of like really the sentimental like yeah as much as it's a a, a, bit of a a bit of fun on the day like like so you know like in another 50 years i think that was such a nice thing to look back on such a special thing to have and and it was it was literally that was like a kind of turning point for me because i was like oh oh yeah like actually like this is a nice thing to to have and to to be able to 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 do so I'm, uh, yeah. I started to enjoy it after that. You're absolutely right. Um, I, I think you you get this realization when you start to look at um wedding paintings of old. Do you know like the ancient ones? The yeah. You ever, you ever looked at some of them? Yeah. And there are different types of scenes, crowd scenes or bridal getting ready kind of scenes. Yeah. Um, and you're like, somebody's painted that. Like an artist has actually attended on the day to take the pictures and sketchbook images or whatever and, and then go away and paint that. So that was somebody's proper wedding painting and here it is today. But I think, I think um, there are two types of wedding painters. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said the word gimmicky. And I think there is, I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah, I, think there's two, two, I think there's two types of wedding painters. I think there's the bride who wants just the gimmicky. He just wants a painter to come and do the whole show up in my day and paint, entertain my guests and paint the scene and just give me a paint at the end of the day. Um, and there's some artists who are very good, who may, that may be their thing. They may just want to be like, on a day, here you go, here's painting. And then there's other brides who look at the painting as a portrait like what you do yourself in a portrait that starts at the wedding and it's it's an heirloom. That's my theory. I think there's two types of client, not not painters. I think there's two types of client. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, and I, it's, it always makes me a bit sad sometimes nowadays when I want to go to weddings and you just feel like you're just a bit of a, just there yeah. to just kind of impress people. And, and um, you know, I'll look, I'm happy to do that. You pay me, I'll be there and I'll do whatever you want. Like, but... Um, I think you, it's, it becomes obvious that the clients that it means the most to them, and they're paying for the the pain for the painting, and not the painter on the yeah. day. If that yeah. kind of makes sense. Um, and I guess there's no right or wrong with that, but it, like it's it's nicer, isn't it? To, I think to when you know for. Just feels a bit more special when you're painting for someone who obviously means a lot to them, and it's like yeah. it, the the it's the the take it's the taking away of the painting afterwards is is what is what they want, and rather than just something to like, I've been to weddings and the bride and groom haven't even looked at it on the day; they just disappear, and that's that. And it's like, oh, have you had that? I've had that as well. Oh, yeah, like, the bride didn't even say hello; like she looked me in the eye and just walked past. <laughs> but this was yeah. like a, maybe a big wedding. And there's lots of different types of vendors there. And um, then you, you, you leave the painting at the end. I'm like, what's happened to my painting? Is it just like, going in the bin? Because all she wanted yeah. was something coming. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've been there and, and it just feels a bit like, but 
you know, that's it's different strokes for different folks, but it's mm-hmm. nice when they really like pay it paying interest. Like I I always like it when they come over on the day and just like ha- they can't wait to have a look at it, even though it's not finished. And like as much as I'd rather not show anyone when it's incomplete, like I really like appreciate that they take an interest and they want to <clears throat> they want to see how it's developing. And ninety nine percent of of like couples were do like you know do obviously like show an interest and they're invested in 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 the in the work. Um, you just get the old one, don't you? I suppose where it's just like, and and it probably it's the usual like huge weddings because, and and sometimes you make it. it um, I don't like to like throw shade on people's weddings, but it's just like sometimes yeah. I now prefer like now that I've had that experience of going to weddings and I do a lot of them. Like for me now, the small the the. The, the low key, wow. just the just small intimate weddings, like they're nicer, so much nicer to me than than the big grand affairs, the, the, which I'm not saying they are, but they can feel sometimes just a bit superficial and just a bit kind of mm-hmm. like it's just oh look at all these things I've got to impress my guests and it, I don't know. Um, I think we all feel the same. I look at all these lovely places that you've been to, like there's Cas. What's where's that? What was that? Castle. That's Peckfooting Castle. That's in Cheshire. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool place. I was there. Uh, I've been there a few times this year. Um, yeah, I get around. Like um, when I think when I first started doing this, because you know, when you know yourself, it's like quite a niche thing. So it's not. There wasn't that many of us doing it. There was only like, mm-hmm. as far as I was aware, there was like a handful like I, I could name. Uh, even now, like, I'm sure there's a lot more, but even even now, I don't know that many people doing it. And um, and because it's quite a niche thing, you just have to kind of be prepared to to go where the work is and go where the demand is. It's not like it's not like you know, for every town, there's an X amount of photographers because that everyone needs. Yeah. You know, no one needs a, a live wedding painter. So um, before before there was more artists, Liam, did did, did you were your friends <laughs> all the wedding artists? Because like maybe seven years ago when you all started out. Did y'all know each other? I, know. Did I don't know. Each? The first the the first person I knew of was Stephanie, mm-hmm. um, and to my knowledge, like she was like the only one that was like that you knew about making any kind of uh, headway with it. And she was just like almost had like a corner of the market. She had like um you know especially like with Asian weddings, and she Asian just to just like just have snapped all those up. And and I I, I owe like so much to her because like she gave me. Um, I, I'm pretty sure she just gave me all her like secondhand kind of work. You know, she was that that busy that she was just passing me clients left, right, and centre, saying, "I can't make this date. Can you like?" And I was going. I mean, she's based down south, so I was going to London like mm-hmm. quite often, um, just kind of picking up on her like you know secondhand work effectively. Um, and so she referred a lot of clients to me, and I'm I'm like it really just helped me just. Um, find my feet with it all I think and just um, it meant it meant me doing a lot of travelling because like I said a lot of it was down south um, but I mean I, you know exhausting you, I think you have to just kind of I think with anything in the wedding industry you kind of probably have to be prepared to um, to travel to an extent um, but now that it's becoming more of a thing uh, I think more and more people are uh, are becoming aware of live wedding painting as a as a thing, um. So there's more demand for it, and I think as a result, I can now, I'm in a kind of position where I can pick and choose where I go. I think my my ideally, I want to stay north. It, it just north of Birmingham is is pretty much like, you know, suitable for me. Like, uh, just within a couple of hours drive, I think is. Yeah is pretty much ideal um i'll go further if it's you know if if i fancy it but um i don't want to put myself under pressure of having to go yeah Um, like i thought people would by the way if you're wondering what i'm doing here i drew you (laughs) 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 (laughs)
I was at a big wedding fair in Edinburgh at the weekend, right? And I thought the wedding, everyone knew what a wedding artist was by now, but see the amount of people who walked past my wee stall saying, oh, what, what is this, a live painter? And then I realised it was maybe not as popular as what we think it is. Yeah, I, do, I mean, I still meet people now and they go, oh, I didn't know this was a thing. Um, mm. And, you know, because I, th- I guess unless... I suppose unless you've seen it at a wedding, then you probably didn't know it was a thing. And then yeah. um, you know, people don't go to that many. And the chances of having, you know, um I find that when I go to when I when I go and do Asian weddings, I think they're a lot more familiar with the format because I, I think I feel like um like live wedding painting in this country almost almost started with Asian. In, in, with Asian weddings. And and the format of their, their weddings like really lends itself to their, mm-hmm. their wedding painting generally, you know, just the the colour and just the exuberance of it. Um, yeah. um and with them being, you know, I suppose they're relatively long ceremonies. So um it it just it it lends itself to to live wedding painting. And I think it seems to have shifted just to to the wider population. So yeah. 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 People, people are becoming more and more aware of it as a thing but it's still it's still relatively niche i think it always probably will be to an extent um but it's nice i mean like i'm kind of glad that like you don't want it to be too well known because then we'll start (laughs) getting competition (laughs) Uh, i'm happy for it to keep we've got like a small circle of uh of wedding painters and it's uh i think like that's good (laughs) don't want too many we're just gonna I'll start getting lost down the rankings of Google and uh, that'll yeah. be awesome. it's, some, it's, it's when people come come out of nowhere and they've got great IT skills and they just go straight to the front page of Google. Oh, no. It's like, what is do it? Like, yeah, I'm in trouble if it becomes more popular because like, I, can't, I can't be bothered with social media. <laughs> and now um, I pretty much just rely on, on like, I'm sure most of my work like comes through Google now. And like I said, because there's not that many of us doing it, it's it's pretty easy just to kind of be in and around the the top the top pages. So um, I've I've kind of like got grown a decent audience with a pretty with very little effort whatsoever, other than actually doing the work. Um, like I'm terrible at all that marketing stuff. I don't know about. Oh, sorry, hang on, someone just popped up on screen. Um, let me just get rid of that. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm back. Um, uh, yeah, like that self promotion. It's like a full time job in itself. I mean, you it know, it's just the just social media. I wish I, I uh, one day if I'm in a position, I'm just going to pay someone to just do it for me and just like <laughs> just do it, like because I I just don't. I feel like really self conscious me like posting on on online these days. I just like um. I don't know what it is. I just, you know, something about it. I don't feel overly comfortable with it. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, it can just it can interfere with your mental health as well. I've been on social media all the time. But I don't know if you follow Watch Maggie Paint. Do you watch follow her in America? She came off, she said, she posted recently, she came off Instagram for six months. um, Just, like, for some personal space. But it doesn't look like it's affected her business or anything. She just no. hit the running again. So who's who's that? Sorry, I missed that. Watch Maggie Paint. Um, she's oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, I didn't know she took a break. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't think much of my work comes from from social media these days. Um, I get the odd, um, the odd one, but I'm pretty sure most of it comes from my website. My, my website seems to get a, a fair amount of traffic. Um, I, try, I try and keep it up to date. I think that's quite useful. But all that SEO stuff, like, it's all just lost on me, really. Like, uh, when I, and whenever I do try and make a conscious effort to to work on it, like, I just get overwhelmed. I'm just like, oh, no. oh I, 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 I. <laughs> so you, you start doing all these like keywords and and um, so, yeah, it's all just SEO and. It, it's a full time job. You're right. You have to be oh, yeah, IT time. minded. And, and most artists, I think, like you're just not, you're... Be, just want to be in the studio. They just want to do something and not really worry about that side of it. But I'm an artist. Yeah, you probably have to be to an extent. 
I'm not I'm I'm a I'm not even a salesperson. So if you put me in a in a wedding show or fair, I'm like oh. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Uh, do you do any of those? Oh, we were talking about this last week. Um with Diane. I I do. Like I spent a fortune on a lot of them at the start and then I realized I don't really like doing them. So and I'm only gonna do maybe just I did one big one this year. Yeah. Um instead of all the little ones. But you have to be strategic in where you choose to do them as well because it might not be the right client for you or yeah. um, do you find them productive or is it um I, I just did one at the weekend there i think what i did right is i set up put, took my paintings i put on instagram and then i sat behind my son painted just because i had some work to catch up on and i thought well people just want to chat to me and now coming away from it yeah i did i took some names and addresses and dates and emailed them out what I should have done right if I was to do it again I should have stood at the front of my stall and said hi I'm a live wedding painter have you heard of live wedding painting let me tell you all about live wedding painting would you like live wedding painter <laughs> and totally just chatted to people and yeah got a bit more passionate about it but I was just a wee bit run down at the weekend and I was feeling like, oh I just don't want to sit here and <laughs> people want to come does that make sense <laughs> oh yeah not the feeling yeah um, it could have been more charismatic. It's just like, and uh, it probably comes with the time of year. I think everyone in the wedding industry is so like burnt out now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's getting to that kind of like we're busy seasons, I guess, kind of over. And everyone I speak to at weddings is just kind of like running on fumes, and and they're like just they're just <laughs> sort of ready for a break. Well, you know, like it's it's a demanding. Um, job in a way you know whatever whatever field that you're in like whether you're you know speak to photographers videographers they're just you know where you have to be on it like all day it's, it's tough work it's um it's rewarding and it's like it's very like satisfying like i i love coming home and i feel like i've done a proper day's work on a, a wedding and i don't really get that so much when i'm in the studio because i just feels a bit too comfortable and easy whereas like Weddings do feel like intense and pressure, mm. just uncomfortable at times. Like, um, but that it takes its toll. Like, you know, it's demanding sometimes. I just think, oh, you know, we just some some days we just we just can't. <laughs> um, so no, I don't blame you for that. I've got. I think I'm doing. A, I've never done a wedding show, and I've got one in February. Just I thought they offered me like a decent kind of rate for it, and I thought. <laughs> I'll just do it. I'll try it. It's in the it's in the Lake District. I like it around there. And mm. thought if I can grab a few clients in that area, then happy days. But yeah. um, I'll see. I think, um, the only thing I would do differently from a stall is put a sign up saying I paint live at your wedding because I think people thought that I was just selling art or yeah. or doing like a portrait as a gift or something. And then they're like, oh, so you oh you paint live I'm like yeah. Yeah, is that not clear? Oh no, it's actually right. not like, not clear because I don't have a sign that says that. Yeah, no, that makes sense, I suppose, because I think people just expect it to be done from from photos and stuff, don't they? These days, so all right, I'll bear that in mind. I'll make sure when I uh, a blackboard, <laughs> when a blackboard. I do my live. Um, I think I was gonna. I was planning on maybe taking my easel and just painting while I was there, but yeah, so, a blackboard yeah. sign or something says, I, "I will come to your wedding" or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there um I feel like I've, I've um taken a lot of your time, right? Is there anything you want to it's chat? It's gone about? really quick, isn't it? What time is it? Is it like quarter have we been over an hour now? An hour and a half, yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Oh, it's, like <laughs> it's really nice to be able to chat to someone like like minded because it's like I feel like <clears throat> we have this kind of um this kind of as artists, we, we have this like joint empathy for <laughs> especially as wedding artists where you like understand it the yeah struggles. like i come home and just run and <clears throat> run to my wife and i'm like oh this happened all right, all right, all right. and <laughs> you know as sympathetic as she is like she just doesn't get it you know because like how why why or how should she um yeah. so it's really nice to um, like um I, I keep in touch with like stephanie and um we <laughs> just uh, like, send messages every now and again, just like ranting and rah, like. Oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> but it's nice. I think it's good that you know you need you need a bit of an outlet, so it's nice to be able to um, 
yeah, it's been it's been really really good to just chat to someone who probably understands. Uh, when you when you go to a wedding, do you have to, do, you, do you have the same? Um, I don't know what the word is. When you go to a wedding at the start of the wedding, you're really excited. You're like, oh, this is great. It's gonna be a new challenge. It's so everything's fresh and then at the end of the wind you're like get me out of here <laughs> you- um, definitely get me out of here like at the end um I, I kind of like it starts like this for me and then like um it goes up and then I'm I'm, I'm always a bit nervous at first because I'm just like I turn up and I'm you you've had a bit of a drive and you just feel a bit like um you know like not quite sure what you're going to expect when you get there especially you know a new venue you're thinking what's mm-hmm. it going to How's it gonna work? Um so once I'm set up and I know what I'm painting and I know I've got time to do it and I get my background in because that's uh, that's normally what I do as I kind of paint like almost like the backdrop to the to the scene. Uh and I know once I've got that in, I can kind of just like relax a little bit. And then I would take a few pictures from that point because that's when of, of the action, so like of the bride and groom, for example. For example, some of the guests, mm-hmm. um, and then that's a really pressured bit, like because it, you know, doing getting some figures in, especially like bridegroom, you want to make sure that likenesses are okay, and and just that's a, that's a stressful part for me, like it was just making sure that 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 is that bit's done, and as soon as I've got like a couple of faces in, and they resemble somewhat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm okay after that point, and, I'm, yeah. and then I'm enjoying myself, and then I'm kind of like, um, just the rest of it kind of just falls together, and then and then, um, I love I love when people come over at an early stage, and they kind of they see it, and it's it's still just the guts of it, it's the bones of it. Mm-hmm. Sit there, and they go, uh, and you just get a bit of a a nod, like okay, mm, okay, yeah. Um, and they're not sure. You can tell what they're thinking. They're thinking this looks crap, but like I'm not going to say it. I'm just like no, they're not. At um, all. And <laughs> and then they come back a few hours later when it's like you know, look when it's in much better shape, and they go, wow. <laughs> and I, I, I like and then and then they look at it, and then they and then they leave, and then all of a sudden, everyone starts coming. It's like a convention yeah. of people because you know that they've 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 come, they've had a look, they've gone mm-hmm. back and mm-hmm. said. Go and check out that painting, and then suddenly you just get this like constant feed, and it, and 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 then people go, wow, oh, oh, well, like, you know, and that that is just like when it all just starts paying off. I think you know when you just like you've been busting it for all day, stressed, mm-hmm. and and then it and then people just see it and they just love it and they think it's magic and it's just like <laughs> so like grat- like gratifying. It's just I, you can't, yeah, you can't you can't beat it, but. Um, I, I I wear like a little fitness watch when I go and do, it. and like you know it tracks your like heart rate and stuff, and it'll tell you when to sit down if you're gonna drop dead or whatever. Like, mm. and my my watch is like constantly telling me like it's like stop, sit. <laughs> like, does it? Probably, yeah, yeah, it always does. So I'm probably gonna um have a heart attack or something. At some no, point. don't say that. Um, <laughs> but um. It, it, my watch actually thinks like I'm working out and I'm actually just stood at an easel painting. So it's... um. Oh. Does your pulse go up then? Does, do you get like a raised heart rate? I don't know, I must do, yeah. Isn't it, it's not like to dangerous levels, but I think it just... <laughs> it, just it's just intense. I, I'm, I, I don't know, do you sit down or stand up? Um, I, You know, I stand up. Depends what you, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I stand up too and it's just like, I, I don't know, to an extent I think um there's something to be said for like concentrating and i I think like people will associate with like physical activity with well with physical activity as well as like you know literally like Mm -hmm. doing things whereas like um you'd be surprised how much like i think you even just like the kind of um the energy you burn just from just Mm. concentrating i think that's something to be said for that so um, and then you you know yourself like how exhausted you are when you get home and you just like you know it's just the the draining the long days and the demanding and it's um but but yeah, yeah. No, absolutely love it and it's um I'll do it for a little while longer yet I think um I guess going forward no kids at the moment but it's in the pipeline so mm-hmm. I guess like I don't really want to be 
out all weekend every weekend yeah we have kids so um that's something to consider but for now it's like a really nice kind of means of just um giving myself some studio time and um once I find that balance between not having to do because I'm still I'm still at a stage where I'm probably doing journeys that I don't want to do mm-hmm. um, but you you just iron all that out as you go along don't you know it's like any any kind of business venture that you you just start off just saying yes to everything and then yeah. once you once you start to find your feet you you, you can call the shots a bit a bit more so I'm um, I'm at that stage now where I think I've, I'm I'm pretty like, comfortable and I can say I can turn work down I can take work on and just um, you know it it yeah it's it can serve my kind of needs as an artist rather than yeah so what do you think the future is for live wedding painting do you think it will stick around I do actually I mean um, yeah. I, I guess it's hard to tell, isn't it, whether it's going to be like a kind of flash in the pan or not. But um, I think with the, how do I put this? Like with the kind of increase in technological things, mm-hmm. like with that, I feel like there's actually more of a demand and almost like a pushback to that. In the in the way that people want handmade stuff, and mm-hmm. I don't think that will ever really go out of fashion. Like you have like AI art and things like that these mm-hmm. days. People and for whatever reason, artists are scared that that's going to take over. It's really not because there's there's no substitute for mm-hmm. for, for handmade. Like, and I don't think there ever will be. I think be, and as as technology improves and and you know takes over our lives, I think we'll always naturally gravitate back to to just human connection school methods you know um and i would i would argue that painting has never been so like you know popular in a way um maybe for that reason i don't know but maybe also just because of social media and just the exposure that you can you know it's easy to have you've got your own shop window to the world now Mm -hmm. um but like having said that yeah um so i think there's something very kind of like for me, there's something quite romantic about like having a um having a, a wedding painter. There's just something kind of old school and and mm-hmm. uh, and unique and handmade. And that that for me will never really go out of fashion, I don't think. Um mm-hmm. if anything, people will look for, for look for more of those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I would like to think that it won't go out of fashion anytime soon. Yay. Uh, I guess you never really know, but um that that's my take on it anyway. Like um, you know, if if oil painting was ever was gonna go out of fashion, I think it would have already had them by now, <laughs> given the amount of things that you know you uh-huh. can you can pick an iPad up and do a painting mm-hmm. now, just like print it out. But no, there's 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 always something to be said for just like raw materials, I think. Um and hopefully that won't. I'm optimistic anyway. It will never put us out of the job. But... Good, good. <laughs> um, and what maybe advice would you give to anyone who's starting out? Paint the light. <laughs> just, practice, just practice. do, just, just do, and don't think. Just, just create. Just find time, even if it's 15, 20 minutes a day. Sketch, draw. Just, just just do something for um, even a short time just just draw like even if it, you, you know everyone's got a piece of paper and a pencil like even if you just sat in front of the tv like look around the room a vase or something just i don't know paint that paint or draw that rather um just just um you, you learn by doing it and there's no don't expect shortcuts don't expect to, it to be easy um don't um you know we all want instant instant gratification these days and that's that's that we're conditioned to want that because of social media and 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 everything just being at our fingertips and some things just take time and just take practice and there's no shortcuts and there's no uh there's a 
the shortcuts in the sense that now you can go on YouTube and you can, or Instagram or whatever, and there's a million videos on how mm -hmm. to, you know, that will help you and inspire you. Yeah. Uh, but all of the work is 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 in just the the doing and handling of of um, of the paint. And don't be don't be disheartened. You know, like there's even you know everyone goes like everyone has failed attempts. Like even the most successful like artists will probably just have days where they just this isn't working. Um, and and that's okay too. And push yourself. Do you test yourself. You know, don't just stay in your comfort zone. Put you go. I, I'm not, like I'd probably be hypocritical to say like go out of your comfort zone because I've I've always probably like played it relatively safe. But in an artistic sense, like I like to paint to draw challenging things, and I think there's no better practice than that. So, um, and don't compare yourself to. Uh, others that have been doing it for much longer because mm -hmm. that is just a, a completely, you know, just unrealistic mm -hmm. um, narrative that, you know, you should be at a certain level at a certain time. Just mm -hmm. focus on your own personal growth. I think if you're improving, then that's really all that, all, yeah. all that you can do. Um, and, yeah, don't be afraid to... I could, I could go on and on, you know. <laughs> just, just do it, like I say. Yeah. But um, yeah, don't be afraid uh, to paint to paint for the slosh pile, as I call it. Like I'm sure yeah. you've got a slosh pile stuff oh, that yeah. you ends up in the bin. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, all these canvases. Yeah. So well, so well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know that's just part of it. it did, some things hit and miss, and and the more you do those things, I think the 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 more you, like um. I've started to now become like aware of the things that like I can and can't do as an artist. So like, you, just by by getting things wrong, like often they're the most valuable lessons. That, you know, the the ones that go right are great because everyone go, oh wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> you don't learn from those really because you just like you, you learn from like the failures really, and you go and you sit back and look at it and go, what happened there? Like why did that go wrong? Mm -hmm. like, why? How can I? improve mm -hmm. that next time it's uh, you, you said that for life in general i think don't you you know you, you mm -hmm. learn from your mistakes and and um and that's just how it is unfortunately you just have to kind of just um mm -hmm. yeah you, just, you have to get it wrong before you you get it right uh, and don't be yeah don't give up that's that's the main thing i think but um that's all we can do you know <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> what's your What's the rest of your day looking like? Are you Are you in the studio or are you? Uh... Um. Well, I'm doing the country living fair in Glasgow next week, um, and I do. I've done it for a few years, and usually I just sell like little little animal things like Highland cows and hares and whatnot. But this year, I decided I was going to um, advertise myself as like a commission artist and do just what you do, basically. Yeah portraits yeah. and dogs and things and house commissions i want to do house commissions like oh, paint yeah, nice. yeah i don't and interiors and i don't even know if that's a thing but people who go to the country living fair are into that so um i'm just ma making some fake paintings to take to that so nice it's nice to just do some kind of just like portfolio work isn't it sometimes like yeah you can really like pick and choose what you do and you have control over it and you can say when it's finished and just like yeah, I like to do that. Just to kind of reinvent yourself almost, just like, here's my portfolio work and just like, yeah. yeah. So that's good. That's good. So that's that. And also this year I want to con I want to try and work on my sales tactics. I'm going to stand in front of my stall and go, hi, I'm a portrait artist. <laughs> like you have yeah. to kind of fake it until you make it really. <laughs> oh, it's tough and yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to kind of, sing your own praises sometimes <laughs> you know it's just like no, i don't think any of us feel comfortable doing that like to an extent so um but like yeah do you use like any tiktok or anything like that i don't use tiktok no because i think oh. it's fleeting and does driver just do old school stuff or nothing at all <laughs> i agree yeah i just like i just i hate that format of like um 
I'm sure it's productive for some people, but for me, just that putting yourself kind of front and center of something going, hi, this is, I'm at a wedding today and come and see what I'm doing. I, I just, I can't do it to myself. Um, I wish I, I wish I had the confidence to just, to just put like loads of just content out there. But because I've heard good, everyone says, oh, you should go on TikTok. Oh, you should, but I don't know. I don't know whether it would be, well, I think I feel like it's just a lot of twelve-year-olds on there, in my opinion. I think if um if other people just go on TikTok and do the wedding thing, then they're making it popular anyway. And then whoever is on TikTok finding these people, oh, I want a wedding artist, type it in, and then they'll find Liam Dickinson art. Oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so everybody else just keep doing your TikToks, and then <laughs> you I'll just work on my Google. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if that's how it works, then I'm happy with that. <laughs> Let them do the, the leg work in the background. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, like I do want to focus more on my social media side of things, and I I say every every like January, <laughs> my new my little resolution. Like, if you go back through my feed every January, I go like I'm going to be more active this year. You're going to see a lot more of me, and then <laughs> it lasts about two weeks, and then they don't hear from me again till. <laughs> <laughs> till like September um, I, I but but I'm, I'm I'm insistent this time I, I've got like I said I've got some studio time for the I've got flexibility for the first time in a long time and I want to I want to tap into that um, that marketing kind of social media side of things just just to see where it where it goes but just be yourself just um, yeah go like hi I'm Lancashire Liam I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's it. You don't want to be someone that you're not anyway, do you? Like, yeah. so, um, I think just like authenticity is like the you know one of them. But like, you- when, when I used to go down south for weddings, I used to. I feel like I kind of dumb down like my uh, northern accent a bit just to try. <laughs> I don't know why I do it. <laughs> try and fit in or something, but. Um, <laughs> And then you just end up feeling like uncomfortable and not. <laughs> so now I go down there and I just like crank it up to, you know, crank it up to the max and feel much happier doing that. <laughs> but um, yeah, just be authentic, I suppose. Just do. Yeah. Like, yeah. If it, some people just don't feel comfortable playing that social media game, and I, I think um, that that's fine. But just as long as you, you know, just chugging away in the background i think that's all it that yeah and just like lots of businesses thrive without social media just work quietly with your hands if that's if that's your thing just there's a there's a false kind of narrative that i think that people correlate like followers with success nowadays mm-hmm. and and it you, you can understand how that how that appears but it's it's not it's not accurate um and it can be like so disheartening for like artists starting out where they where they're looking and they've only got like a few followers and they're looking at someone else and with you know maybe like tens or hundreds of thousands of followers and 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 thinking like how am i gonna ever you know compete with that and it's not true you know i i I still maintain that i think like quality or quantity will always like um always come through but unfortunately the you know the algorithm these days is is designed for just pure for just pumping out it rewards people who just pump out content uh, however <laughs> mediocre that is mm-hmm. um, and they're the they're the ones being you know it, it, it's like a social kind of currency nowadays is there is follow account uh it's that you know numbers 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 and mm-hmm. um i try not to get I don't think it's healthy for one to get absorbed in that in that mm. way of thinking, um, and I don't think it's an accurate metric for measuring success either. So, um, just you know, you just do you, and I think that's 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 all we can do really as artists. Yep, you're totally like <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for chatting to us today oh, to speak thank you it's been a pleasure <laughs> it has yeah no i've enjoyed it thank you um thanks for thanks for hosting when does this when does it typically go out do you know 
Or... Um, I post it. I post it now. I post it late. Like. Okay. Cool. I post it today. Yeah. Does the video con content go on? Or is it just so? Uh, is it audio? Hang on. I'll, I'll press stop. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>